بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today, inshallah, we'll be starting from ayah number 85. Ayah number 85 of Surah Al-Imran. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa man yabtaghi ghayra al-Islam deenan falan yuqbala minhu wa huwa fi al-akhirati min al-khasirin. كيف يهدي الله قوما كفروا بعد إيمانهم وشهدوا أن الرسول حق وجاءهم البينات والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين أولئك جزاؤهم أن عليهم لعنة الله والملائكة والناس أجمعين خالدين فيها لا يخفف عنهم العذاب ولا هم ينظرون إلا الذين تابوا من بعد ذلك وأصلحوا فإن الله غفور رحيم إن الذين كفروا بعد إيمانهم ثم ازدادوا كفرا لن تقبل توبتهم وأولئك هم الضالون إن الذين كفروا وماتوا وهم كفار فلن يقبل من أحدهم ملء الأرض ذهبا ولو افتدى به أولئك لهم عذاب أليم وما لهم من ناصرين صدق الله العظيم آية نمبر 85 الله سبحانه وتعالى informs us about the importance of Islam. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهِ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Whoever seeks a faith other than Islam, it will never be accepted from him, and in the hereafter that person would be amongst the losers. This is the general meaning of the ayah. I'm sure it's an ayah that doesn't have too many difficult words for us to understand. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ Whoever will seek a deen other than Islam, فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ It will never be accepted from him. وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And in the hereafter, this person will be of the losers. But the ayah has some depth to it. And each ayah of Qur'an is very deep. We can never get all the way to the depth of these ayahs. There is no way that till the end day, people can ever claim that now we understood the full meaning of just one ayah of Qur'an. Because the knowledge of Allah. And how can we get to the end of Allah's knowledge? Impossible. And therefore, each ayah is an ocean. We will just try to pull out few pearls from here and there, things that we can apply, we can understand, we can appreciate, as Rabbul Alameen is informing us of them. So the general message of the ayah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Islam is the deen that is acceptable by Allah. Other than Islam, there is no religion that is acceptable by Allah. But now, Let's try to translate the words that normally we would not translate. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ Whoever will seek, now deen, we said religion. What does deen mean? Deen in Arabic language means a way of life. Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah says that there are two words that Allah uses in Quran. Milla and deen. Millah means the rules that Allah have established and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have ordained, which means the sharia as we call it, this is millah. So what comes from Allah is millah. When we follow the millah, that is deen. Very important. When we follow the millah, 
which means every order that came from Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala, the combination of these orders is called Millah of Islam. So all the orders, the complete way of life that Islam introduced to the world is the Millah of Islam. When me and you follow that Millah, our following of the Millah of Islam is called the Deen of Al-Islam. So if there is no following, then there is no Deen. Got the point? If there is no following, there is Millah. Millah is the one that Allah established already. But if there is no following, then there is no deen. If we follow 90% of Islam, then only 90% of deen is there, 10% of deen is gone. In simple words, for this deen to exist, it has to be taken completely and followed fully. Otherwise, that percentage of deen is missing. Because deen is what me and you practice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the millah. And now if we follow it, that millah becomes deen. Deen is mine and your practice, is a way of life. When a child is born, what to do? As the child is growing, what's the responsibility? What are we going to do as parents? What should we teach the child? What should we do ourselves? All the way from the time the child is born until the child dies. Until this man grows up and he is placed in his grave. And even after that, all the rules are there. This is the millah of Islam. And these rules as they are being followed, it's called the deen of al-Islam. So Allah says, Whoever will be seeking for any deen, which means any way of life, other than Islam. What does Islam mean? Submission. So now, let's put that in mind. Whoever will seek a way of life other than full submission to his Allah, to his Rabb, Allah will not accept that thing from him. So anything we do that, not come, that does not come as part of submission to Allah, Allah says, I will not accept it. So at every step of life, whenever we do something, we need to look at ourselves, is it coming as part of my submission to my Rabb or not? Which means, is it fully the way Allah wants it, or I have my own ways mixed with it? I have a celebration. Half of the things are from deen, the other half are not from deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ I will not accept anything from you. Because I want Islam full submission. I don't want half, half submission. You want half, take the other half for yourself too. I'm not going to accept anything from you. A person performs salah. I'm doing it for the sake of Allah, but I'm going to make it very long salah because people are watching. Four minutes for Allah, one minute for people. Allah says, let them have the whole thing because I don't like partners. I want full submission. You can do something fully for my sake, I'll take it. If you want anyone else to be part of it, I have nothing to do with it. Dina. Whoever will seek a way of life besides fully submitting himself to Allah, Allah says, فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ He will never accept it from him. Now the amazing word that Allah is using here is, it's not whoever will follow a deen other than Islam. He doesn't say that. Generally when we read the ayah or when we hear the ayah, the message we get is, for some reason we just say to ourselves it means to follow some other religion. This is not what the ayah is telling us. So ayah doesn't say, وَمَنْ يَتَّبِعَ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا A person who would follow a deen other than Islam, in fact, what the ayah is saying is, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا If you just see it, Imagine if you seek something outside of Islam, Allah says, I will not accept anything from you. Now imagine if a person not just seeking it, he is following it. How bad he would be in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who is just seeking some other way of life, Allah says, I don't have nothing to do with him. 
Now a person who went a step beyond seeking and he is following something other than our, 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 the deen of Islam. So this deen is a deen that Allah has chosen for us. It's a way of life that Allah has chosen for us. And it's a way of life that comes as a complete package. We can't just take things from here and there. فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ It will not be accepted from that person. وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ In the hereafter, this person will be of the losers. Another very important message that we get in the light of this ayah is a question that many people ask. How about the other religions? Wouldn't they go to Jannah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا A person who wants a deen other than Islam, who's seeking a deen other than Islam, it will not be accepted from him. For salvation in the hereafter, to protect yourself from the khusran, from being amongst the losers in the hereafter, you need to have Islam as your deen. Any other deen will not be accepted. Straightforward. A lot of times we are shy to tell people that no, Islam is the only deen. No, no, we should be lenient. We should be polite. There is nothing being harsh in this. We have to be truthful. And being truthful is always the most polite way. Lying is not a polite way. We cannot be polite by lying. By cheating people. We have to be straightforward. People of every religion, if they are really followers of that religion, they believe that salvation lies only in following that religion. Yehud are clear about it, that if you are not a Jew, you will not be saved. Christians very clearly will tell you, if you don't believe that Jesus died for you as a son of God, you will, there is no salvation for you. So, we... Why do we have to hide that Allah sent His Messenger, Sayyidina Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He sent His final book, if you don't follow the Messenger, if you don't follow the book, فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ Nothing else will be accepted from you. Straightforward. It's not, that doesn't mean we are going to fight with people in this world. That doesn't mean we are going to even hate people, but simply it means that we will Try to convince people to follow this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because salvation lies in following this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does Islam mean when we say the religion of Islam? Standing from Adam alayhi salatu was salam, every prophet preached Islam. So when we say only Muslims will go to Jannah, it doesn't mean only us. Standing from the time of Adam alayhi salatu was salam, the teachings of every prophet of Allah were the teachings of Islam. All the prophets of Allah that preached Islam. At that time, every prophet was coming for a local community. There was not a single prophet that came as a universal prophet for the whole world. Different prophets were sent and many at a time, and they were all in their localities. All the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam preached Islam. The deen that they preached is called Islam. Finally a time came when there was no more need of having zonal prophets. Every prophet for one zone. It's a time when we bring a universal prophet. Now the path have been paved for it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time sent Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who came as lil alameen for the whole universe. And the Quran came for the whole universe. Hudan lil alameen. Guidance for all mankind, for all the universe. This is why many of those who claim to be prophets after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and there is a long history of those. From the time, standing at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with Musaylamat al-Kadhab, and then after him Aswad al-Unusi, and then a woman, Sajjah. And we have a whole history of people who try to claim to be prophets after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And until very recently, in fact until in our time, 
There are people who are trying to claim it in different areas, different parts. Every sometime you would have someone come up and he wants to claim to be a prophet. The amazing thing you find there is every person that claims to be a prophet and he presents a message, you would realize that message that he's presenting can only apply to local community. And a person whose message applies to a local community, we may call him Imam, but we can call him a prophet. This is a big difference between Rasulullah's message that he can weave and every other apostle that will claim to be a prophet. That no one, it's a challenge, no one can bring the type of message that will be universal. It's only, this is miraculous nature of this message. The miraculous nature of Qur'an, that it's universal, applies to people in every part of the world. Subhanallah, you really, sometimes it surprises you how people in China are taking these ayahs. How people in Japan are taking these ayahs. How people in Middle East are taking these ayahs. How people in this part of the world are taking these ayahs and understanding them. But you find the universal message applies to all people at the same time. Not only this, then there is no even time limit. You look at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa what was the situation of the world at that time? And each and every ayah applied to them at that time just as much as it applies to us 1400 years later today. There isn't any ayah of Qur'an that we can say it's outdated. It's a miracle. You take any book, there isn't any book where you can say, after 50 years, everything that's in this book stands same as it was 50 years ago. From the time the person wrote these things, there are a lot of changes are needed. In fact, every second, third edition, you will see some changes. In every book in the world, people have to make amendments, they have to make changes. Quran is the only book. That where there is no need to change. Everything is there. Everything is in effect. Nothing is obsolete. And nothing outdated. Everything applies to us today as it applied at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the miraculous nature of Quran that really we don't appreciate having it because we have it all the time. We don't realize what we have. I'm sure the Christian ministers, they really wish to have something like Qur'an if they are preaching the Bible that changes every few years and they agree that they know that they are bringing new additions to it every few years, I'm sure they hope they can have something like Qur'an that is in original form, in its original language and no additions of it if the same throughout the world and throughout the centuries. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا Where then why a person would seek a deen other than Islam? So, this deen came as a universal deen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combined all the messages that came before this, He combined them in this deen. And He gave us this deen that is a universal, that's for all people, for all kind of people. You would find, in our time, people who are extremely knowledgeable in different fields, of course, no one is very knowledgeable in every field. I'm talking from the worldly point of view. Some people are really good in their field of science and whatever field they have chosen for them in that science. And some people are in medicine, some, in different sciences. And those people, when they look at Qur'an, at the ayahs of Al-Qur'an, from their point of view, that thing leads them to Islam. A lot of them accepted Islam. It leads them to Islam, thinking, knowing, realizing that there was no way, there is no possibility of someone knowing this information 1400 years ago. The information that Quran is presenting. On the other hand, you find those who are criminals. They didn't study a word throughout their lives. Their parents tried their best to get them to go and learn something. Give them some sort of education. Parents, teachers, principals, everyone tried their best, they never learned. Ended up on the streets. Now they are known as to be worse criminals. They end up in the jail. 
In jail, someone brings them the Qur'an. The person reads Qur'an, and after that you see him reading Qur'an every day, and the tears are falling of his eyes. Illiterate people, ignorant people, criminals, are benefiting from this book, just as the most knowledgeable people in their fields are benefiting from it. Universal. For all kind of people. And really, it's not easy to find anything like this. It's impossible. And this is why, this is the only book, this is the only book where at the beginning of the book, it says, the book starts with a challenge. لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This is a book in which there is no doubt. Every other author will say, we'll put an apology there, if you see any mistake or if you have any comments, please inform us, please let me know, we will make the changes. And you, sometime, even if he doesn't say it, you write him that, you know, I read your book, but I think this idea wasn't presented well, or this thing was, okay, okay, we'll try to fix it in the next, next edition. Quran is the only book that starts, La Rayba Fi. There is no doubt. Go and find any doubt. Forget about objection. Find a doubt in this book. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, I gave you this deed that came as complete way of life. And now, it's up to you to follow. It's our responsibility to accept it and to follow it. And since what we follow is called deen, remember that. What we follow is called deen. Therefore, when the person is placed in his qabr, the question will be, ma deenuk? What's your deen? What was your way of life? What way of life did you choose for yourself? The way of life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that was introduced by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or you preferred some other way of life. Ma deenuk, what's your way of life? كَيْفَ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا كَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِيمَانِهِمْ How would Allah guide those who disbelieved after accepting iman? وَشَهِدُوا أَنَّ الرَّسُولَ حَقْ and they testified that Prophet is true. وَجَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ And clear signs came to them about the truthfulness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah will not guide the unjust people. Ponder into the meaning of the ayah through the translation and see what ayah, what meaning comes in your mind. كَيْفَ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا كَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِيمَانِهِمْ how would Allah guide people who disbelieved after accepting Iman? After being believers. Ba'da Imanihim. After being believers. What message comes in your mind? وَشَهِدُوا أَنَّ الرَّسُولَ حَقٍ And the witness for the Prophet ﷺ to be a true Prophet. وَجَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ And they have seen the clear signs also about his truthfulness. Allah says, كَيْفَ This simply means Allah will not. Allah will not guide those people. Kafaru by the imanihim who disbelieved after being believers. What does this mean? If the meaning is what me and you may be thinking at this time, and that is, a person who turns away from Islam becomes murtad, Allah will not accept his tawbah. That's not correct. That message is wrong. Doesn't Allah accept the tawbah of the murtad? If a person will come back, sure, the doors are open. In fact, we encourage him to come back to the deen of Allah. So what does this ayah mean? This is a good example to realize that depending merely on translations or just sometimes footnotes is not enough to understand the true message of Qur'an. In fact, a lot of time it could become misleading. Say a person who uses his opinion about this, and God forbid, he is the one who has turned away from Islam. He was thinking of coming back after reading this ayah. He will say, there is no way that Allah will accept me and Allah will forgive me, forgive me. So there is no reason for me to come back. Let me continue doing whatever I'm doing. This ayah is not about that situation. This ayah is telling us about, and now once we talk about the true message of the ayah, then we will go over the wordings of the ayah so that you can see how that uh, that message really fits the ayah 
the Jews at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Yahud, especially those who were in Medina Munawwara. And they had the opportunity of seeing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all the time. They were convinced that he is a messenger of Allah through all the signs that they have seen in their books. And we know in Quran Allah informs us before the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Yahud they used to tell the Arabs around them that soon a prophet would come. We will follow that prophet. They thought it will be a prophet that will come from their background, from Bani Israel. So they always used to talk about the coming of a prophet. In fact, that was the main reason they got settled in Medina. As a group of them was traveling by there, and when they saw all the signs according to their book, fitting that area of the last prophet where the last prophet will, will immigrate to, so they got settled over there. In fact, their king who was with them, he donated the house. Imam Ibn Kathir went into the detail explaining that the king built a house and he said that give this house to that prophet in case if any of you is alive at that time, then make sure you give, him as, give, give this house to that prophet as a gift on my behalf. So happened. It was long after that. So many hands changed. People even forgot about it. But it so happened. The house of Abu Ayyub al Ansari radiallahu anhu was the same house that was built by that king. So Abu Ayyub al Ansari radiallahu anhu, the one who was the host, really Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was the host. It was his house. That shifted through so many hands and finally it came to Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa went and lived in that house for some time until he built his own house or his own room. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them that you people knew about this Prophet. You used to talk about him all the time. You used to tell people that a Prophet is coming. يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ They recognize him the way they recognize their own children. So then you recognize Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So these people believed in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came, they disbelieved. Before his coming, they believed. By description, when a person would come with this description, we will follow the person. He will be the last prophet. We are going to believe in him, we will become his followers. So they believed in him before he came. But when he came and they realized he's not from Bani Israel, he's from Arabs, we are not going to believe. So, this is, Kafaru by the imanihim. That is believed after believing in him. Believed in him before he came, and then they disbelieved in him after he came. وَشَهِدُوا أَنَّ الرَّسُولَ حق. Even after he came, they really witnessed that Prophet is true. They recognized him. There was no way to deny. There were a lot of people from Ansar who had very close ties with Yahud. So these Ansar, they tell us, there are hadith where they inform us that my friend who was a very close friend of mine among the Jews, he said to me, he said, make sure you follow this prophet. He is the prophet. In fact, Imam Bayhaqi rahimahullah narrates that Safiya radiallahu anha says that once my father and my uncle, they went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And both of them, they really loved me. Safiya radiallahu anhu, who became Ummul Mu'mineen later on. She was from the same Jewish tribe. She said, my, uh, they both really loved me. And my uncle, he really loved me so much that every time he would see me, he would smile and he would hug me right away. He will give me a big smile that really will make me happy and he will hug me. 
They went to Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They spent the whole day with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Faraja kalain. They came back. They were extremely tired. And I went. I'm trying to go and get in front of my father. So that at least I know I draw his attention towards me. He doesn't even look at me. Then I go in front of my uncle and he doesn't look at me. I said, something is wrong. I know they are upset. They're tired, but at the same time they're upset. Something is wrong. What happened? I don't know. As a child, I kept on playing around with them. So my uncle asked my dad, Ahua Hua, they are the exact words. Ahua Hua, is he the one that we have the description of? That we were waiting for? He said, Naam, huwa huwa. Yes, he is the one. So then my uncle said to my father, Then what's the opinion? What's your opinion? What should we do? He said, Adawatahu hatta al maut. To keep on fighting him and opposing him until we die. Why? We are not going to give up all of our prestige of our family and you know the honor that we have for Bani Israel and just hand it over to this man to these people now no we have been telling these people that soon the Prophet would come and we will follow him and you people will become our followers and now it will be the opposite direction they are from his tribe so they will have the upper hand so kafaru ba'da imanihim that is believed after believing, and not only this, وَشَهِدُوا أَنَّ الرَّسُولَ حَقٍ They also witnessed that the Prophet, this messenger, is a true messenger. وَجَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ And they even seen the clear signs came to them about him being the true messenger. There was no way for people to deny. There was no way. If today, the proofs of his prophethood are so strong, that we can really challenge and say no one really can deny the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam if that person believes in anything of the past. If you believe in anything in the past, if you believe Einstein was a person, then you have to believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was a messenger. Anything of the past, if you believe in it, then we have a stronger proofs to prove the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam from the same angle as you would prove your history. وَشَهِدُوا أَنَّ الرَّسُولَ حَقٍّ وَجَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ Clear signs came to them. وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah does not guide the wrongdoers. People who intentionally chose to be zalim, to do zulm, what could be worse zulm than this? You know the Prophet, you recognize him, and you're saying we are not going to follow him? We will keep on fighting him? For what? You know he's a messenger of Allah. أُولَٰئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ أَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ Allah says, the punishment for such people is that on these people is the curse of Allah, the curse of angels, وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ and all people together. What does this mean? Let's say, okay, Allah, وَالْمَلَائِكَ مَلَائِكَ curse them too. But how about Nasi Ajma'in? Do all people keep on cursing them at all times? No, the kuffarids are not cursing those zalimin maybe. But the fact is, every person says that we don't side by the wrongdoers. And every person curses the wrongdoer. Because there isn't any person in this world who feels that everyone is holding to justice in the world. We all know that there are people who are unjust. Even the unjust people know that there are some other people who think they think that they are unjust. Everyone looks at others, some group of people in the world that these people are zalimin, these are unjust people. Even the criminals may think that the people, the justice system that is in the country is unjust. Everyone has something in mind that is unjust in the world, and this person curses the injustice that is there. Allah says, when you curse any type of injustice in the world, it goes, it goes to all the zalimin, and these are zalimin too. So, one nasi ajma'in, the curse of all people goes back to those people. Khalidina fiha, 
they will remain in it forever. In what? In this curse. They will remain in this curse forever. لا يخفف عنهم العذاب. Neither will the punishment be lightened for them. ولا هم ينظرون. Nor they will be given any respite. They will remain in this curse forever. The curse of Allah is there. The curse from people, from malaika is there. Even once they go to Jahannam, the disbelievers, kuffar, once they go to Jahannam, they will be cursing each other that it's because of you that I did not become Muslim. It's because of you that I did not accept the truth. وَالنَّاسِ ajma'in. They will continue having the curse of all people. And, لا يخفف عنهم العذاب. The punishment will never be lightened from them. This is one of the facts about the adab of Akhirah. That it will never be lightened. Every other adab, finally a time comes when a person will not feel it that much. You are in pain, first day is too much, the second day maybe less. But the adab of Akhirah, every time they would feel that it's just getting worse and worse. لا يخفف عنهم العذاب. Adab will not be reduced, will never be lightened. وَلَا هُمْ يُنظَرُونَ And they will not even be given any respite. They will say, you know, how about one day? وَنَادَوْ يَا مَالِكْ لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكْ قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ Malik, ask Allah, that cause us to die. He said, no, you have to stay there forever. So they will say, okay, اُدْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ يُخَفِّفْ عَنَّا يَوْمًا مِنَ الْعَذَابِ Ask Allah, to make the adab lighten only, to lighten the adab for one day, six days, okay, but we'll take that severe punishment one day, a little lighter one. We'll say, no way. وَلَا هُمْ لَا يُخَفَّفُ عَنْهُمُ الْعَذَابِ وَلَا هُمْ يُنْظَرُونَ They will not be given any respite. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ وَأَصْلَحُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Except for those who repent afterwards. And they fix their ways, then Allah is all forgiving, very merciful. This is very, very important to pay attention to these two words that Allah used over here. Those who cause fitna for the ummah, those who cause fitna for others, they stop others from coming into the deen of Allah. Now the person says, I'm sorry. Allah says, it's not enough. Tabu min ba'di dhalik. When you cause a fitna, when you are misleading people, after that you do the tawbah, you repent to Allah, but with that you need to fix the situation. وَأَصْلَحُوا You need to fix yourself. It's not that all of my books are still out there, all those CDs are still there, all the movies are still there, oh I'm very sorry ya Allah. Doesn't work. أَصْلَحُوا إِصْلَاح Fixing the situation is must. You can't allow those things to continue and then claim that I did tawbah. With tawbah, islah, fixing the situation is must. And remember in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every time when He talks about any group of people that caused any harm, any damage, Allah tells them, after your tawbah, there has to be islah also. إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ Talking about munafiqeen, kill you. إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ Will be in the lowest part of the hellfire. وَلَن تَجِدَ لَهُمْ نَصِيرًا You will not find any helper for these munafiqeen. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا Except for those who do the tawbah and aslahu, they fix their situation. وَالسَّارِقُ وَالسَّارِقَةُ فَاقْطَعُوا أَيْدِيَهُمَا جَزَاءً بِمَا كَسَبَ a person who's, who steals something, a thief, man and woman. فَقْطَعُوا أَيْدِيَهُمَا جَزَاءً بِمَا نَكَسَبَا نَكَالًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ فَمَنْ تَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ظُلْمِ A person who would do tawbah after his wrongdoing, his injustice to others, and وَأَصْلَحَا And he would fix the situation. Many times we do things, and we think now, I can just do tawbah? No. You caused harm, go and fix the situation. Help people to understand that that was wrong. Aslahu, 
إلا الذين تابوا من بعد ذلك وأصلحوا فإن الله غفور رحيم إن الذين كفروا بعد إيمانهم ثم ازدادوا كفرا لن تقبل توبتهم Surely those who disbelieved after having accepted the iman thumma zdadu kufra then they increased in their disbelief lan tuqbala tawbatuhum their repentance will never be accepted wa ulaika hum adhalloon they are the ones who have lost the path they are the ones who have gone astray similar message isn't it pay attention in alladhina kafaru ba'da imanihim those who have disbelieved after accepting iman thumma zadu kufra then they increased in their disbelief allah says i will not accept their tauba who are these people now al hasan al basri rahimahullah as imam qurtubi rahimahullah narrates in his tafsir and imam wahid rahimahullah in his asbab al nuzul that imam qurtubi al hasan al basri and qatada and many others they explain this ayah by saying kafaru bi isa inna alladhina kafaru bi isa ba'da imanihim bi musa those who disbelieved in isa alayhi salam after believing in musa alayhi salam again talking about the same group those who disbelieved in isa alayhi salatu wassalam after believing in musa alayhi salatu wassalam ثم ازدادوا كفرا then they increased in their kufr by denying rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam now you see how the ayah really makes sense you can really understand the message that kafaru they disbelieved not talking about a muslim who turned away talking about kafaru bi isa disbelieved in isa alayhi salam after believing in musa alayhi salam then they rejected musa rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam they got even stronger in their kufr lan taqbala tawbatuhum allah says for those people i will not accept their tawbah wa ulaika hum adhallun they are the ones who are off the track this is just like In Surah Al-Baqarah, beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Inna al-ladina kafaru sawaun alaihim." For disbelievers, talking about certain type of disbelievers, it's all equal for them. It's all the same for them. A anzar tahum am lam tunzir hum la yu'minun. Whether you warn them or you do not warn them, they will not believe. This is about what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is saying about these group, this group of people that those who reject Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and now they reject Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Their tawbah will not be accepted. Simply means they will not get the tawfiq of the tawbah. They have committed a crime by which their hearts are sealed. Now they will not get the tawfiq of the tawbah. Wa ulaika hum al-dalun. Inna aladina kafaru wa matu wa hum kafar. Surely those who disbelieve and die as disbelievers. Wa matu wa hum kafar and they die as disbelievers. Falay yuqbal min ahadhim mil al-ardi zahaba. An earth full of gold will not be accepted from any of them, even if they were to offer it as as a ransom on their behalf. Ulaika lahum adabun alim. For them is a very painful punishment. Wa ma lahum min nasirin, and they will have no helpers. For those who disbelieve. and they died as disbelievers this is of course a aqida this is part of our iman we believe that wa matu wa hum kuffar those who just who died as disbelievers falan tuqbala tawbatuhum now in the hereafter on the day of hisab on the day of resurrection he says ya allah i'm sorry it's too late you had to accept it over here you were given this life so that you accept you you, you believe in what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires you to believe in falan tuqbala tawbatuhum Therefore, their tawbah will not be accepted. فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمْ مِلْءُ الْأَرْضِ ذَهَبًا This earth full of gold will not be accepted from that person. What does this mean? Simply, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, He can do the impossible things and still it will not be accepted. Who can fill this earth with gold? We wish if we can just fill our home with gold. 
if that person will fill the whole earth with gold on the day of Qiyamah, he will come to Allah and he will see the adab of Allah. And now he realizes, this is too severe for me to take. So he says, Ya Allah, I can bring all of that gold and give it as a ransom to know that you can free me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there is no way. فَلَنْ يُخْبَلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمْ It will not be accepted from him. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Ma'idah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا as far as disbelievers are concerned, لَوْ أَنَّ لَهُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا وَمِثْلَهُ مَعَهُ If they have, the, if they own the whole world and another universe with this universe, can they do it? Never. Another universe with this universe similar to this one. لِيَفْتَدُوا بِهِ مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ In order for them to pay it as a ransom, to free themselves on the day of Qiyamah, مَا تُقُبِّلَ مِنْهُمْ It will not be accepted from them. Look at this amazing hadith that explains this ayah which is in Sahih al-Bukhari and muslim How this person would be treated, the one who is trying to present a lot of wealth. He is trying to fill the whole world with gold and present it as a ransom. Anas radiallahu anhu narrates the hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يُجَاءُ بِالْكَافِرِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ the kafir will be brought on the day of Qiyamah. And it will be said to him, Ara'ayt, لَوْ كَانَ لَكَ مِلْءُ الْأَرْضِ ذَهَبًا أَكُنْتَ تَفْتَدِي بِهِ If you had this world full of gold, would you give it, pay it as a ransom to free yourself today? So he will say, sure, why not? The hadith in Sahih Muslim says, كَذَبْتْ You are a liar. You are lying. قَدْ كُنْتَ سُئِلْتَ مَا هُوَ أَيْسَرُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ We asked you much less than that in that world. And you didn't want to offer that at the time. Now you're saying that you will offer all of this? You had the opportunity. The kafir is asked to offer his iman. Offer iman, accept iman. And people like us, we are asked to offer whatever we can. Whatever we can afford. We don't have to offer the whole world. But at least something, do something. But people, at this time we are trying to hold everything back to, your, to our souls. At that time, people will be told that we asked you much less than this. You are, you are willing to offer the world, we asked you much less than this. And you refuse to offer it at that time. And now you're saying you, you're going to go and bring so much more than that? No, we don't need it. That's it, the time is gone. وَمَا لَهُمْ مِن نَاصِرِينَ And they won't even have anyone to help them. Next ayah, the beginning of the fourth just it's really telling us about now the importance of spending. As this ayah is telling us what happens to those who don't. So now next ayah is telling us, in contrary, what those would get who would spend. Inshallah, we will continue that in our next session. وَصَلَى اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَلَى عَلَى خَيْرِ خَلْقِهِ سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين يا رب العالمين